abstract simplified model. So, so to how much this is applied to real cells, so that, that we need to be a little bit careful. But anyway, we discuss this. Okay, so the question here is that we have so many molecule species. And then this reaction is generally stochastic. So actually, Matteo asked about this kind of, uh, I use this uh, ordinary differential equation, but this, this uh, each molecule replication occurs very much stochastically. And some molecules number is very small. So basically, you have many species, but number of each molecule is not necessarily so large. So some may be large, but some molecule species has the abundance, just a, a few, cell, few molecules in a cell. So this is not so large, not, not, not necessarily so large. And this is somewhat large. So, so this is somewhat different from usual statistical physics situation. So, so I just consider in this setup, is there some kind of law for across different species uh, that should be satisfied so that the cell can produce the same so basically same cell. So the question here is that, so I have many different molecule species, and then some reaction process is going on stochastically, and then going uh, grow and divide. And is it there some kind of, some statistical law, statistical law, across species. So that means, so I have some, okay, some, there are several molecule species, and some are very much abundant, some are less abundant. And so then is there some kind of statistical law of these abundances of each molecule? So that's what I want to discuss now. So for that, I consider a very, very simple cell model. And so this is a kind of a version one ideal cell model, or so maybe you, you can consider okay, this, this ideal cell model is too, too simple, so and you one need to kind of so extend this or devise this. You, you can think of that, yeah, how that is possible. But anyway, here, what we want to discuss here is that, okay, you have, okay, maybe, yeah. so within this cell, so there are several molecule species. And each has the number of this N0, N1, Nk, maybe initially. And then reaction is going on. And then this number is changing. And for simplicity, I consider some these are kind of catalyze other molecules. other molecules uh, replication, replication. So one of the important nature in this uh, cellular reaction or most molecular processes in a cell is that it is basically catalyzed enzyme by enzyme. So you need enzyme to produce the enzyme. So there are several enzymes, but these are produced from other, so 
with the aid of other enzymes. So you, you can consider many different types of reactions. But for simplicity, so this is too, very much too simple, but I consider that just some catalytic molecule here, and by that, I is, from I, you can produce K. So maybe this is a little bit too simple version. You can consider some other cases that uh, more higher order reaction or something like that. But for simplicity, I take the simplest two body reaction case. So this is catalytic molecule enzyme. But this has to be produced somewhere else. So that means uh, maybe xj uh, plus xl, this, no, no, xm plus xj plus xl or something like that. And so j is produced J is produced uh, somewhere. So, so here I consider only enzyme type molecule and no, no other metabolites, uh, uh, metabolites are included, but maybe you can put this here, this metabolite to, for this reaction is going on. So this is a kind of two, two simple reaction process. So we take this randomly, put, so okay, this is furthermore random reaction network. So I take just randomly, I goes to J also, okay, now if you, this is one, I pick up three, five, 10, randomly, and then, then I also take a random number, this is catalyzed by seven, or this is catalyzed by 12, or something like that. So that I made initially. So here, this reaction is somehow, the number of molecules is conserved within this. I changes to K, catalyzed by J. So for a cell to grow, you need some kind of input. So here, I assume that there are some nutrient chemical. So maybe for, for simplicity, maybe just zero. So this is supplied from outside. And this is not non-catalytic. So X0 is introduced from outside, and this may be transformed 0 to maybe 5 or 12 or something like that, catalyzed by 3 or 7 or something like that. So <laughs> this is maybe biologists will be upset with this too, too simple <laughs> model. But uh, anyway, so maybe for, this is a physicist uh, simple ideal cell model. So then what you need is that there is some kind of external, external bath, so outside the cell, external bath, and that has X zero, and with some rate D, this can come in, and some molecules may go out with some, maybe with the same D. So for, for instance, X0 molecule is coming with this rate, but if this concentration of X0 molecule is higher than that, then this diffuses out. So for this cell to grow, possibly what you need is that you have outside X0 and flowing in. And, and if this is transformed to some others, 
So after this entered, this is consumed to some other x, y, transform to x, to y, to some others. And then there can be constant flow. But if this reaction does stops, then maybe this is finally balanced, external, outside balanced, and then cell cannot grow. So what you need is that, okay, there is uh, this flow, and then by that, this reaction going on. But for this reaction to going on, you need some kind of some other en enzyme X, <coughs> 5 or X, 12 or something like that. So this has to be produced somewhere with this reaction. And if this is produced, well, then it can come in. So, so that's a very simple cell model. And, and then if it works, this number of molecules within this cell grows. And if the number of molecules within, it grows. And then for simplicity, again, we assume that we compute the total number of And if this is larger than some threshold, okay, this is occupied by too, too many molecules. And then, then if this is some threshold, it divides into two. And in the, when it's divided into two, maybe each molecule is randomly distributed to two. So random. So, so you, you understand this situation? I have a question. Yeah? Uh, so it's not clear what, to me what is a concentration and what is a number. And in particular, not all the molecules uh, can diffuse outside, right? Uh -huh. Or oh. all the molecules can diffuse. OK, so the concentration here is basically total number of this. So assume that volume increases with the Volume is proportional to n, mm -hmm. okay. total n. So this is, this is the concentration. OK, but not all the molecules inside can diffuse outside, right? Otherwise... OK, so not all, all the okay. molecules. Otherwise... All, only some, some are penetrable. So maybe the simplest case is that only nutrients are penetrable. And others are, remain here. Yeah. So, so you, you, are you okay? Maybe this is too, too simplified cell model, but uh, maybe for physicists, maybe, okay, this is fine or something like that. Uh, how does this model have the understand the rate of chemical reaction that occurs inside the okay, cell. Okay, the rate of reaction, so of course, this is, uh, so depends on the reaction, so some rate reaction going on KIJ or something like that. And you can distribute this number, but for, for the simplest case, this is set as, everything is set as one. So th that's the simplest case. So still, this reaction network itself is random. So we assume there are some, some rate of P path from each molecule species. And so this is another parameter. But for, for example, if you have 1,000 cells, 1,000 molecule species, and maybe, uh, so for, for, for instance, K, equals 1,000, and P is uh, maybe 20 or something like that. Yeah. OK? Yes. I, I the... Thank you. I don't see the transformation from X to N. Uh, did I get that wrong? Uh, is it, there should be J like... to, oh, OK, I to go to. So if you have uh, some reaction here, I, to K and catalyzed by J. And these are chosen randomly, yeah. Okay, but uh, N grows because you accumulate N, right? 
Yeah, so, so when, this is only some nutrients. Mm -hmm. Nutrients can come in, and then by this flow rate, this total number of molecules increases because these are not consumed. So, of course, there, some molecules may go out, but uh, as long as this flow is larger, then the cell can grow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah. So, so we did this simulation. So we can do this simulation maybe, so the, basically you, if you have, for, for example, if you have a totally maybe some, maybe 10,000 10, molecules within, and then put this, each molecule within this cell, and you assign if it is X1 or X2 or X3 or something like that. And then what we did is that randomly pick up two molecules. And according to this reaction network, if it can react, then with this reaction rate, it goes to change. So that's this reaction process. And then otherwise, the next process is that with some rate, this X0 is coming in or coming out, going out. So, so that's what we did. And then if the cell, the total number grows, then we divide into two, yeah. Are there any backward uh, transitions? Oh, okay, for simplicity, we, we do not consider this reaction, yeah. Yeah, of course we can <laughs> include that, yeah. And, but if we include then this forward and backward and this, as long as this rate is larger, Basically similar, yeah. Yes. I don't want to anticipate the results, but if in equilibrium there is uh, still more X outside than inside, uh, the, like this rate should be much larger, the, the rate. Outside, yeah. Yes. So uh, yeah. if this cell can work well, so this is, change to some others, so then outside X0 is larger than inside. So then there is a flow, yeah, yeah. and then growth, yeah, yeah. So, so that's a model, yeah. Of course, yes, you said this backward reaction, so including backward reaction is also important to connect this model with thermodynamics. So because uh, in the case of thermodynamics, so we have exponential energy of this, and then the reaction rate forward and backward is given by that. And so we discussed this in a different <laughs> model, and th that is also, yeah, chemical reaction. So this uh, kind of, uh, sometimes this process shows some kind of chemical reaction process with uh, similar to glass dynamics genetically glass dynamics. So, so that's also interesting, but this is a bit different topic here, so. Yeah. Can we have the, the bones of Malekun are transformed into uh, some final species, Malekun, which does not have any uh, possibility to interact uh, you, with others? Everything goes to some molecules? Yeah, some absorbing molecule that, that cannot interact and transform But here, other. so I show this randomly and uh, each molecule has <coughs> p path. So, so it it's hardly occurs that this is accumulated because yeah, it uh, can change to some others. Of course, in a, some very special reaction network, maybe there is no catalyst here and this only remains. That could happen, but it's a considering random reaction network that is very, yeah, implausible, yeah, yeah. Yes. We consider only a local reaction they might have, um, you said. Oh, oh. I mean you, lo this. Locally, you mean locally in space? Uh, in the space within the cell. Ah, okay. Oh, I, I forget to say. This is somehow kind of very well mixed soup cell. So within this, so there is no, so 
if you consider some kind of spatially localized structure, maybe uh, this goes to this within this reaction process, and th there may be some kind of spatial heterogeneity. And so this reaction going on here, but not going on here. But here, for simplicity, I assume that this cell is well mixed soup. Mm. So, so no, no spatial structure. structure. So, okay, I forget to say. Yeah, this is well mixed soup. Well mixed soup cell model. Yeah, so, so that, that's also another very drastic simplification. So it's also interesting to discuss this, including spatial structure, and then maybe in that case, at some position, x5 is larger, and some position x10 is larger, or something, yeah. Uh, is the network of the reaction sparse or dense? Okay, this is somewhat, so, it's, so if you have a, so something like that, if you have k thousand chemical species, and for, from each maybe 10 or 20 parts. So, so in that sense, so, uh, it's far from the all to all. So, so this is much smaller than k, yeah. But, but still, you need to have some number, some sufficient number. If it, this is just one or two, then the reaction is not percolated, yeah. Okay? Yeah, so, so very abstract physicist type model. And so what do we check this, how, okay. Maybe the parameter here is that of course these N or K, but uh, maybe one important parameter is this kind of how the rate of this flow from the outside to inside. So we change this and what happens? Okay, we can do the similar thing with uh, using uh, yeah, continuous ODE, ordinary differential equation, with some reaction rate, but mostly here we discuss this, yeah, kind of simple stochastic simulation, the result of simple stochastic simulation. And then, first, what we found is that by changing D, if you have a larger D, one can expect maybe this cell can grow faster because the nutrient flow is larger. And so we compute the growth speed. Growth speed is that, uh, okay, this cell, so maybe threshold is uh, maybe something, uh, maybe 20,000 or something like that. And when this number increases beyond this number, then cell divides. So you can count that, how many steps you need to go to this number. And then you repeat this and you can compute the average division time. So the inverse of this average division time is the growth speed. So, so we can compute this growth speed and as a function of D. So as you can see, okay, this okay, growth speed is black point. So this growth speed increases as you increase D. Okay, this is what uh, we expected because this flow is larger. And then, at certain critical D, the growth rate drops down and there is no growth beyond this. Even though we have a higher flow. And so, okay, initially, wh why this? we thought, but, but now we can then understand this. What occurs here, okay, it's not written here. If the flow is too large, and then the cell is mostly occupied X0. This flow is coming in for very large, and before this reaction is going on. And if this, so, so large, then finally you have a situation that, okay. This cell is mostly occupied with these nutrients. So it's a very strange situation. 
this x0 is mostly dominant. And then, usually, if this reaction going on to by other x12 or x13 or x20 catalyzed by this, some other. But at some point, this number goes to zero. And if this number goes to zero, it stops here. So actually, this catalyst has to be produced somewhere else with this some other reaction, maybe somewhere here. So if this process, reaction process, does not work so well, then at certain point, these go to zero. Then the reaction stops here. Yes? Then this meaning about if you, uh, you describe the simulation procedure, the, you need to have one parameter which uh, take into account the presence or absence of the catalyst. So because um, if you, well, go, back, we, if you yeah. go back to a few slides previously, um, you just mentioned that if you take randomly two uh, molecules, yeah. you ask whether they are uh, able to react. And then yeah. if they react, and with certain red KI, they, they produce a... Uh, um, yeah, but in most cases, if this is occupied by this, if you just randomly pick up two molecules within, maybe in most cases, this is X0, X0. Then no reaction going on. And maybe, it's, maybe there exists some X10 uh, or a little bit. But then there's in, there is a case that X0 and X10 are selected. But this does not show reaction. Only if these pair are selected, the reaction going on. And the probability is, uh, yeah, as long as this goes to zero, the probability to have a reaction from here to others goes to zero. So then the reaction stops. All right? <laughs> yeah. So, so actually, so if this D is too large, this no growth condition appears here. So that's the critical point here. So of course, this is a very, very simplified cell model. So maybe in the real cell, probably, such kind of a yeah, strange situation would not occur. But anyway, this is the result of this model, yeah. And I have a question about growth. So does, do cells grow exponentially in this case over time? Yeah, basically, it's grow exponentially, yeah, yeah. Yeah, is it okay? So then, yes. Yeah, is X0 the only uh, permutable species or? Yes. Yeah. So it's only X0 that can be fused in and Maybe out? Maybe you can include some other penetrable molecules. But, but maybe this, this slightly changes this critical point. But uh, yeah, it does not matter so much, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So many questions. Uh, yeah. Sorry, I have a question regarding the threshold they are choosing. How do you choose it in this simulation? Like A threshold is that this? Yes. Oh, OK. This is uh, I, I set up initially. And so basically, this is the kind of total number of molecules. So actually, in the simulation we did is that uh, this is 10 to the, I forget, 10 to the La quite large, 10 to the, I forget, yeah, maybe somewhere else, 10, maybe I think, I think this is, uh, in the simulation, maybe 10 to the 6 or something like that. And so this is the threshold of, of the total number of molecules. And Molecule species number is also rather large, but, but smaller than this. So, so for, for, in the, for instance, and this species is a 10 to the 4 or something like that. 10 to the 4, 5, something like that. Is it OK? So this is initially fixed. Yeah. So you, you can choose any, any value. But, uh, but anyway, this should be rather large. Yeah. Okay, so 
So what we see from here, okay, maybe for this cell. Um, I have questions, please. Yes. Please, instead of uh, considering the random reaction, can we consider the Markovian? Oh, basically Ma Ma Markovian, or just, just take randomly too, and there is no, yeah, previous memory. Yeah, but like in the random, we usually pick two. Yeah, randomly pick up two. So, but for the Markovian, I think we are just yeah, basically Markovian. So, if you for the next reaction, you can just choose randomly again, so two two molecules without any memory of the previous. Yeah. So, so it's a very well stirred soup and just reaction going on randomly, random by random collision. So. So that, that's a very simple situation, yeah. Uh, okay, my question was about the similarity. Like, I'm, I'm oh, okay, I, I'll explain that okay. now. Okay, so, so then, so similarity is that, okay, when this cell grows and divides, so you have initially, so before, so starting, you have this number, n0, n1, nk. And then, then, so total, total n is this n i. And then, this becomes 2n, and then divides into two. Then, the next generation occurs from So if the cell after division is completely identical, then that means this, so each molecule concentration is completely the same for the mother cell and daughter cell. So if we assume that, okay, cell should be completely the same after division, this, this should be. But of course, this is random reaction process. Maybe it's perfect, yeah, sim identity would not happen. So we can consider that, okay, how this is similar. And so then, so basically you have a, can define a kind of n dimensional vector. So here. So maybe you define this, and you can define this ve vector. So the, this vector is a x1, x0 to x, k. And then within this n-dimensional, n uh, k-dimensional space, if the daughter and mother cells are completely same, that means this and this are same. So, but if this is totally different, maybe it goes to a different. So you can define this X mother and X daughter. And then if you consider that's uh, X mother, X daughter, and then maybe x n x t. So that gives this kind of cosine theta. And if this is one, it's completely similar, same. And if it's zero, it's totally different. So so that that is the similarity here. So the question, so why we introduce this is that we are interested if this cell can reproduce the almost same cell or not. So if this similarity is larger, maybe the cell can reproduce almost the same similar cell. So that, that's this similarity. And this similarity is the result, okay, this red one. So this, so at, around this transition point, this is close to one. So it means as this growth speed increases, and as D increases, 
you can have more similar cells. Yeah. Yes. Uh, a question on the similarity. Yeah. Like, uh, how does it involve the abundances of the chemicals? Because you wrote with X, okay? Yeah. X, uh, X is that, okay. Total, ah, okay. yeah. Like, like this, uh, and uh, you just do the inner product. So you, you, you can have, uh, okay. Basically, this cell state is that defined all this, uh, okay, K dimensional state space. And so x1, x2, x3, xk. And then the cell state is defined as this position okay. here. So, so by that, so you can define this mother cell state yeah, yeah, yeah. and daughter cell state and just okay. yeah, compute Thanks. this yeah, in a product. I, are we assuming anything about the division process? I mean, it doesn't even need to be the same number of molecules in each. It's just a random process in which it divides, it creates a line and it divides by two. Or do, are we assuming oh, something okay. about when, the process when in which divide, the cell divides? When this divides, basically, if you have these molecules, so just randomly pick. Okay. So if you have two N molecules, just randomly pick N molecules. But I pick N. M. Yeah. They have the same. Each of the cells have exactly the same number of total molecules? Either, uh, That's the, the only constraint we the, put? Just total number is uh, so n and n. OK. Yes. But, but that, uh, just randomly pick up uh, yeah, from this. OK, two but n they the both n. have yeah. the same number. Yeah. That was the question. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Are they equally probable uh, to pick any, any of them? Like Me. the partition is the same. Uh, it's the same to pick uh, one uh, x from another, the same probability. So, so basically, so just <laughs> just randomly pick up but, but from two random, to random, 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 random with what probability? Cells. With one half. So if you have, uh, of course. So if you have a, so if you have a situation, this is a hundred and this is a, uh, fifty, or if you just randomly. Completely just equal partition, that means 50 and 25 for each. But if you randomly pick up, maybe this may be 27, or this may be 552, and the other is 48, or something like that. So if you have many of them, basically, yeah, you can roughly have, so due to this law of large numbers. But if, for example, if some molecule is just uh, two or something, maybe that easily happen, this goes to, for one cell, this is just to, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> okay, so um, I think my question is primarily, I don't see how, for example, with this random picking of molecules, yeah. the diffusion coefficient somehow affect the similarity. Oh, okay. For this pickup process of this division, diffusion process is not involved. Diffusion process coming in is that in this reaction process, reaction and diffusion in. So in this division process, it's not included. Yes, involved. but somehow with your results, you're basically showing that the diffusion coefficient of the molecules coming in and out has some sort of relationship with the similarity of the mother cell and the daughter yeah. cell. Yeah, so that means, okay, if this diffusion is large, and then there is some kind of structure, so this is more abundant, and this is second abundant, and this is third abundant. So then the, there is a case that, okay, you have, this is 1,000, this is 500, and this is 300 or something. Then you can have, maybe it's quite similar. But in some other cases, this reaction is just very, so randomly, so there is very slow flow, from then this reaction is process is just mostly random. So that means this is 20, this is also, maybe this is 30 or this is 20 or this is 15 or something like that. Then after division, maybe it can be more deviated. So, so this is the structure here influences on this similarity. Yeah. 
so there are two daughter cells right so yeah. with which daughter cell are we calculating oh, okay. so so i can just choose random one of the two two daughter cells and continue this reaction processes but we repeat this process so many times and compute the statistical average so so which we choose do not matter so much. okay 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 <laughs> now it's fine Okay, so now we consider, okay, what D value is good for this cell? So that means, of course, it's better for a higher growth. And so that means the cell state around this transition point is maybe good for this cell. And around this point, maybe similarity is large. So if D is closer to this critical point, maybe this cell is good. So maybe, so this is a kind of constraint from uh, biology or constraint for a good cell or in this model, means that, okay, D, But this is a little bit tricky because if this approaches DC, then, then by a little bit increasing that, this cell can no longer grow. So this is a little bit dangerous. But so maybe, maybe if you have, maybe around here, maybe this will be good for this cell, for this simple cell world. Okay, then, okay, so, so what, what we did this here? Then, so, okay, oh. so I mentioned that, okay, in this case, so there are maybe X0, is, N0 is 1,000 and N1 is uh, 500 or, so there is some kind of structure in abundances. So is there some kind of statistical structure in this abundance? So some are more abundant, some are less abundant. So what we did is that this is just plot the ranking versus abundance. And that kind of, yeah, plot is often used in some statistical model and maybe you, you may have heard of, of this similar thing. So, so in this case, so basically what they did is just simple. Because since x1, x2, x3, x4, this, this number index is kind of a, has no special meaning. So even if you plot this against this number index, that does not mean if you choose a different random reaction network, this may be totally different. So what we did is that, okay. <clears throat> So if you have a X, okay, maybe you can. So for, for instance, if you have this situation, X1 is 300, X2 is 8,000 or something like that, we just put the ranking. So this is the most abundant, this is the second abundant, this is the third abundant, this is the fourth abundant, and this is this. So what we plot is that ranking versus abundance. And so, so this is, the result, ranking versus abundance. Of course, we, we plot this in this order. This should be always a decreasing function. But how, what kind of the structure of this function depends on the case. So what we plot here is that, okay, this ranking, and if D is small, maybe more like so every molecules are rather have a kind of similar abundances. So, so everything is a 20, 30, or something like that. So that's the case when D is small. And then as D is increased and near the critical point, we have this situation, this ranking and abundances, and this is log log plot. Then this is the slope minus one. So abundances is 
ranking minus one. So this is what we observed in this simple cell model. And when this simple cell model can grow well and reproduce the almost the similar cell, then we have this situation. And now, OK, this is a kind of too, too simple model. But as we, as I said, we can check this kind of law in the real cell. And in the real cell, of course, we have many, many different uh, chemicals. So maybe you can compute, for example, each so protein species or messenger RNA species. And for experimental reason, there are easy technique to compute this messenger RNA. So from this messenger RNA, each protein is produced. So there are many different uh, protein species. And corresponding to that, there are many different messenger RNA. So you can have, yeah. So, so from that, so we measure. So actually, this is a little bit old data. And there may be a little bit better result. But uh, yeah. So we take, for, for example, in this case of human liver cell and human heart cell. And again, ranking versus this abundance of each messenger RNA. There are actually 5,000 messenger RNA species. So this is the slope minus one. So it looks roughly OK. And of course, there may be some deviation here, but actually, the measurement too, usually if this is too abundant, maybe there is a saturation in the measurement. So this may not be maybe such a result. Or there may be real saturation, something like that, deviation from the power law. But basically, this is minus 1. And uh, OK, this is also maybe this slightly different, but maybe slightly different, but we are not sure. But globally, this is minus 1. And this is also minus one, minus one. So although this is a very, very simple model, maybe this, this kind of result may be at least to, to, to yeah, approximately of it is valid, yeah. Uh, in the previous slide, um, I saw cancer, the graph of uh, human, is also cancer have a minus one slope? It Seems a so. Bit. So, there. This part is minus one roughly. Yeah, but there uh, may be deviation here, but I'm not so sure, <laughs> because as I said, this this is just a totally ten ten messenger RNA species. So and so very very small fraction, and also maybe this is maybe due to this measurement. Yeah. Okay, but but I my question is more about. Um, isn't cancer trying to grow without any limitations or something like that? So oh, okay. shouldn't it be a bit different from other cells? That, that, yeah, so we know cancer is a more high, higher growth. But uh, yeah, we are not sure about that, yeah. And of course, cancer is somehow depends on each type of cancer has a different characteristics often. So it, it's a little bit dangerous to say from that we can expect. Yeah, we initially thought that, OK, if we could find that this, is, this results for usual cell and if cancer cell does not follow this, that would be great. But maybe <laughs> not true. <laughs> yes. Hi. For the Zips, Zips law slide, yes. Yes. Um, I saw that uh, they have varying values of the number of molecules. So does that mean that if we also vary big D, um, the big N also kind of changes for different? Um, so in this samples? model, you mean? Um, no, for the slide, previous slide. This, uh, okay. That, that one, yes. Yeah. So, so this, 
in, in our model, this is valid if D is close to critical point. Right, so and in some way also the N changes because of D. Is that the case? And, and, and you mean Big the N. total yeah, number yeah. of molecules? Yes. yes. Uh, so actually, in this model, so we fixed this threshold for division, so the total number of, yeah, N is fixed. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes. I have an anecdotal question. And it is when you did uh, when you did this intervention, you knew at first that the concentration, like, can we come to the next slide? Mm -hmm. uh, did you I mean did you first think of the model and then realize that it uh, how it was, or you first knew the like the, the experiments and you knew the distribution oh, okay. and you said, oh, this, <laughs> this is a power law, this must be a statistical feature. It was like more of how was the process of uh, realizing and it. Initially we did this simulation and then, okay, then we tried to, actually this is 20 years ago or something, and then <laughs> we, <laughs> we tried to find some kind of, a, yeah. Actually this is uh, the data, so actually the real data this is not our experiment. So there is some kind of in some database and we, okay, then we try to see, okay, if this may be okay for the real data and then check, so. But this, the data this was pre, pre, prior, I mean, this yeah, data this already existed, a, yeah. you saw, but yeah, you, yeah. you didn't see Experiment this data. Experimenters show this, uh, <laughs> okay, this uh, messenger RNA data, all these, but they are not, at that time, they are not working on this kind of, uh, yeah, statistical, yeah to find a statistical law at that time. Maybe now more people are going in that direction. Maybe just a comment on the growth of cancer. I mean, I'm not the expert, but what I understand is that like the limitation on cancer growth is more about uh, like the cell trying to like make, it's, it's more in the, how do you say like, not following the constraint of the environment rather than the fundamental difference on the cell itself. But I'm not sure about this. So like yeah, at least so we cannot, <laughs> in this simple model, we cannot <laughs> discuss, okay, this is true for cancer or this is not yeah, for the usual cell or that, that we cannot discuss it. So this is too simple, yeah. Uh, going back to the model, uh, did you find a uh, some even the results when you were like looking for them, uh, some cells that didn't have the necessary things to keep on living, like you have like that state uh, appear in some frequency. Because when you're near the DC, the, the uh -huh. critical diffusion, I think uh, that that affects the similarity. You would have a, a lot of, um, of proteins, but very, few of some of the other pro proteins that can make the, the network break down. Yeah, network broke down. Yes. Yeah. Did you find that in, in yeah, that frequency? A, yeah, for, for example, beyond the DC or near very close to DC, ah, that, yes. that can happen. So, so in some sense, this is a little bit interesting. When, how it uh, starts to collapse. So then at some position, so Maybe, so maybe you need X20 or something to, for this catalyst. And then maybe this is a little bit far from this network part. And then initially, okay, all molecules exist. But at some stage, maybe they lack some, some part of molecule X30 or something like that. This since this is more abundant than X30 is. But maybe X30 is necessary to produce X20. Then X20 disappears, this. And then finally it stops. So the network somehow shrinks. So initially they have all this, but maybe, so it's some part supporting this is disappear. So in the order of this collapse, what happens here is that you have some kind of network layer or network layer, some, something like that. And then at some stage, this disappears. And when this disappears, maybe this 
reaction path disappears. And then this reaction path disappears. And then finally, this path disappears. So it successively shrinks. So this is a result because every molecule needs other molecule species for to grow. So everything mutually supports with each other. So if some part is, so if one is too dominant, and then maybe finally they collapse that had supported this growth. So if you consider some kind of very rich people, and rich people can grow, and this can grow, but usually rich people need some other people for their growth. So, so if they are too rich, they suppress this other who, who would support this reaction and finally disappear. So actually, it's interesting. So initially, so when this occurs, so we, we have this rank and abundance is zip, zip low. And this, when this collapse appears, this is something like that. So this is too much. And then some are too less. And then finally, supporter for this will disappear and finally it goes. And then at some stage, this is quite dominant, but there is no more they can support. And then stops there. OK, this may remind of this uh, how kind of disparity in capitalism. <laughs> so people say that, okay, some disparity is necessary for capitalism to sustain and for growth. Maybe this is true. And, but if this is too strong disparity, then finally it collapses. Okay. <laughs> and actually, this kind of law is also seen is so this is generally called Zip's law. And Zip, Zip is originally found this law in the linguistics. So when you measure, maybe you know, this uh, measure this uh, frequency of each word and or over maybe in the English that, that is the most common or then the end or over or something like that, then frequency abundance plot, they plot this and they Zip found this. And also, this is, in many cases, this is true for also in this kind of, so wealth. So maybe some are very rich guy and the second rich guy. So you can have this wealth and ranking. So I do not know who is the most, who is the richest guy. <laughs> I don't know, Elon Musk, or I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, it's somebody here, somebody here. And then, and so often this shows this. But probably maybe now the capitalism going to this, and then maybe <laughs> we may maybe collapse, I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, as long as this system, the system for this growth, they need some others and mutually support each other, then maybe some balance is necessary. And if it's too, too much disparity, then it will, would collapse. So maybe this is true for cells and then this uh, economy also probably. Yeah. OK. OK, so I, I, I did not explain why this minus one but, but maybe I, this is a little bit too detailed calculation. So if you are interested in, you can check this uh, paper in this uh, physical review letter 2003. But, but basically, the structure that in this case, so the highest ranking and second ranking, so this catalyze, so this lower next level layer catalyze this and this catalyze this. And that structure is, yeah, self-organized near the critical point. 
So, so this is zips, okay, and some, yeah, okay. So maybe this kind of power law near the tra transition point, maybe you know already in many of these statistical physics examples. So that, that is also appear here. Okay, so, okay. This structure is an assumption, right? It's, a, it's somehow organized near the critical Because point. you because generate the it's network. Just, initially, we put this random reaction network. So such kind of structure does not exist in the network itself. And as for, for instance, if this D is small, we cannot have this structure. And if D is large, then more abundant of this nutrient, and then there's uh, some other layer that can be pr produced from this mm -hmm. and catalyzed by others. And so that structure emerges near the critical point. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, okay. It, it took more than, yeah. But, but anyway, it's interesting to consider this kind of, uh, yeah, zipso in general. And maybe, maybe, probably the explanation for this cell by this simple model may not be true. <laughs> the real cell is more and more complicated. I, I initially said all this reaction rate is unity, but uh, maybe this reaction rate itself is distributed in a very, yeah, broad range. So that, that may be important to have this zip flow in the real cell. So, but, but anyway, this is just a simple model and simple model prediction may be okay or something like that. Okay, so maybe I have 20 minutes. So I have another point here. So near this critical point, so similarity is large, but still it's not perfect. Of course, this is random, this reaction process is stochastic. And so that means, so maybe you have this cell and divides into two and you have another cell. You have many cells here, computed, and then, and then set up, pick up some special, some specific chemical. So you compute Ni of this cell, and then you compute it Ni. So then you can compute the distribution of this chemical across cells. So now we consider the distribution across cell. Previously, we discussed this, uh, yeah, distribution across species, molecule species. But now we consider the distribution of across cells. So we divide this process and then we take many, many cells in this simulation. And so maybe for the cell one, this X1 chemical is 10,000, and for cell two, 8,000 or something like that. And then we can compute the distribution by so using this kind of simulation. So what we found is that distribution is something like that. So Ni, so this is a distribution for a different chemical species. So previously, what we discussed this average of this and average of this and average of this across chemical species. And that follows this flow. But here, we take some specific chemical species and compute the distribution across, yeah, cells, and this shows this kind of distribution. So you can see this is rather different from usual Gaussian distribution because this has a long tail over the abundant side. And then we take, make a transformation. Instead of just plotting N as a PN, we take log N and then plot this. And then this is the result. So this is a more abundant chemical and less abundant, much less abundant chemical. 
So if we take log, log n, so the distribution is almost symmetric. And only by that we cannot say this is log n is really Gaussian distribution or not. But, but actually this is close to Gaussian distribution. So the, this kind of distribution is called, okay, maybe this is log normal distribution. So basically, in the original n, right, this shows long tail. But if you take log n, this is more like Gaussian distribution. So, so basically, you can have this log. So this distribution is that. Average exponential minus, and maybe you need some kind of normalization constant. So, in the original distribution, that so you can consider just Gaussian distribution for log variable and then transform to this original, and then the distribution is something like that. Yes. Uh, uh, analytically, you mean this? Uh, okay, <laughs> from from where? It's a. Uh, oh, okay. Log normal distribution is just a transformation. So it's a. Uh, no, 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 if you no, assume no. the. Okay. How to derive log the, normal the, distribution? The the whole model trying to solve it not numerically but analytically. Mm, so far, not possible. It's a. Uh, yeah, we we did this numerically and. Okay, near the transition point and uh, assuming some kind of, uh, is, so this kind of structure, we can derive some kind of dip law and also maybe log normal distribution. But that's, that's not an analytic derivation, it's some kind of approximated uh, estimate or something like that. So, but if you are interested, you can make a kind of analytically solvable, solvable model for, for this kind of thing, yeah. Okay, so, and again, okay, in the, oh, I forget. I forget to put this, okay, new experimental result, I'm sorry, I forget to put to this, but experimentally, uh, this kind of log normal distribution is mostly observed for chemical species. Of course, there are some deviation that if this depends on, depending on some specific, so low molecule number species, there may be some deviation or something like that. But roughly, as a very rough estimate, this is close to log normal distribution. So I forget to put this, but now what they did, actually experimentally, there is a technique for this. So cell sorter or something like that. So you put this cell into some kind of machine and this flows in and then so each cell comes in one by one. And then you have, for, for instance, laser something. And then from this diffraction, you can compute, observe the abundance of each. So, so for instance, put some protein. So to put some protein. And often there are many techniques experimentally to make this protein fluorescent. So there's some fluorescence. So then you put this, and then the fluorescence is measured, and then you can so measure this fluorescence for each cell. And from that, we can 
compute the distribution of fluorescence across cell. And actually, this, this technique is uh, very fast, and so you can measure this uh, maybe 10,000 cells, and then distribution so quite easily. And of course, in some cases, okay, maybe the cell volume may be different, and then if this has a larger cell volume, maybe fluorescence is accordingly increased. But in that case, so actually they can measure this and some from the, some scattering, they can measure this volume and fluorescence. And then you can compute volume by, fluorescence by volume. So that corresponds to this kind of a, yeah, concentration of each protein. And so if you make one protein fluorescent, then you can compute, measure this kind of a distribution like this. And I, I forget to put this, but uh, I actually the experimental experiment shows rather log normal type distribution. Yeah. I yes. Have a, I have a question. So the zip uh, we saw before, it's a sort of convolution of this distribution with the distribution of the averages, right? Uh -huh. So if you look at how broad or what is the distribution of the averages of this, uh, of this. Um, so so basically, here. zip case is uh, okay. This is okay. This value and this value and this value and this value. So distribution across chemical species. So the variation doesn't matter here. So you, the, yeah, so the, that's the averages average, are, yeah, uh, are over, zip. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And actually, this is also agrees with this experimental technique. So they usually measure, so when they measure many different chemical messenger RNAs, they usually average out many, many cells. So. Basically, this technique is used for measuring specific molecule abundance over cells. But if you have 10,000 chemical molecules, it's, it's difficult to put this uh, different fl fluorescence and put this, then, then it's very, very difficult. So you can measure only just a specific molecule, or maybe two or three, and, and then compute this distribution across cells. But in the previous case, you can compute this, uh, so this across species. Instead, usually across species, in this measurement, what they did is that you, you take many cells and then, so start and then, then from that you can, so compute a measure, messenger RNA, one, two, something like that. So this is, in this case, average over cells. So if it's, of course, it's ideal that you can compute, ev measure every different, uh, yeah, molecule number for each single cell. And th there is some kind of recent technique advances, yeah, for that it's a single, single cell RNA seq or something like that. But, but of course, this is a m much more, yeah, more takes some more time or money or something like that, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, okay. So the question is, why log normal is, appears here? And this, okay, before that, we know that normal distribution, Gaussian distribution is quite common in nature. And that is due to central limit theorem. If you have some kind of a random process and adding by that this many, many, this process, you get some kind of Gaussian normal distribution. So then why we have this uh, 
log normal distribution because we have many, many reaction processes and many complex reaction networks. So we can consider that this may be similar to just to follow this, yeah, no, so central limit theorem and going to Gaussian distribution. And the reason for this is that basically, if you consider some reaction process and A, X is produced with some other help of this A, this is multiplicative. And so this is the simplest case of this explanation. X increases by A and then this is something like that. And if NA is distributed and fluctuating, then this follows log N is shows some kind of Brownian motion. And then maybe log N follows the central limit theorem. And in this case, so actually you have many reaction processes going on. So catalyze this, this is catalyzed this, and this is catalyzed by something else then you can have successive catalyzations by this is catalyzed by something else and this is catalyzed something else. So X is catalyzed by Y and Z and then Y is catalyzed by something else. So basically you have multiplicative random process. So by taking log, then you can have, so multiplication is changes to addition by taking log. So, so the rough argument here is that, okay, if you have just random addition, random addition, this leads to central limit theorem and Gaussian distribution. But here you have X is catalyzed by Y, Z, and Y is catalyzed by uh, A, B, or something like that. So then X dot equals Y, Z, and this is something like that. Then this is random multiplication. And you know, Multiplication is by taking log, then it can be changed something like that. So by taking log, then, so this is changed to random addition. So after taking log, you can use Basically, central limit theorem, it goes to Gaussian. So, so that's the simplest explanation for why log normal distribution is, uh, appears in this case. So, yeah. So this is uh, an explanation for that. So maybe this. Yeah. Actually, one interesting, yeah, fact here <laughs> is that you know, our weight, human weight, so maybe for adult male or something like that, and it follows log normal distribution quite well. And while, while height follows quite well with usual normal distribution. This is well known and uh, I do not know what is the so ultimate theory to explain this, but probably, yeah, in the, somehow weight produces successive processes and then, so maybe propagation of uh, yeah, processes, uh, this multiplication processes works for the weight. And maybe height is uh, not like this, some kind of maybe addition of many factors and then usual, yeah, Gaussian distribution central limit theorem works. Because 
you, you can guess that, uh, okay, human weight is not the Gaussian distribution follows. So usually like this. So in Japan, there are some small wrestlers who has uh, 200 kilogram or something like that. <laughs> but the average is 70 or something and maybe for adult, maybe 40 or is the minimum or something like that. So it's a quite, yeah, non-symmetric <laughs> distribution. And after taking log, this falls quite well, this, yeah. So, so that is, but while height is very, yeah, strictly follows this Gaussian distribution. You, you might think, okay, if the height follows log normal distribution, maybe somebody has a four, four meter <laughs> in height or something like that. This may not be good. That, that, that you, you may guess that, but, but actually 200 kilogram is not good either, I think. So, so that is not the explanation, I think. So there is some more mechanical mechanism explanation. Yeah, but anyway, so this log normal distribution is, uh, yeah, rather common in this kind of cell processing. And also maybe in ecosystem, maybe Jack knows much better than I, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so maybe it's 10.30, so you have more questions? Uh, about the, um, the plot where you showed the relation between the diffusion coefficient and the similarity and the growth of the cell. Yeah. Um, is this just the behavior of the model or there is some evidence of those kind of behavior in Yeah, in actually, cells? so you mean this, this kind of? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, because in the real cell, the flow process is not so simple. And this, this is much more complicated. And anyway, this is not go good for this cell because it's better to choose this near the critical point. But then if this is slightly larger, maybe by slightly changing the condition or something, then it can easily die. So that's not good. So one question is that there is some other mechanism for this cell to adapt to this state or so self-organize to this critical state. And that I'll explain maybe Friday or something, yeah. So, so uh, let's say a uh, So in this case, so they somehow the avoid this going to this. And if you try to go in here, it comes back, effectively tuning this D internally. So th that is by adding a simple process, we can show that. Yeah. So okay. and of course, in the real cell, much more <laughs> complex. So maybe they use a more yeah complex mechanism to to adapt to this good state. Okay. Thank you. And another thing I wanted to ask is. Uh, whether you explore the, if the geometrical structure of the network has some influence on the... On network structure. Yeah. So you mean some kind of power or exactly. uh, scale-free network or something like that. Okay. Yeah, that's often asked. <laughs> so in the initial model... Yeah, it's model, a difficult question to yeah, ask. <laughs> in the initial model, so this model, of course, the critical value itself changes depending on the network structure. But this structure itself does not change. So for some other network, maybe this is goes to a larger value and this may be a smaller value. And, and then we did, okay, if we change the network structure, is it better to have a higher growth or not? And actually, that is possible. And if we have this kind of abundance structure, then Accordingly, it's better to change the network structure. 
So actually, if we start from this kind of model and choose the network so that it can grow faster, then finally we get a scale-free network. So, so power of distributed network. So maybe abundant structure is first. Then maybe it's embedded into the network structure. That, that is uh, somewhat interesting because, uh, yeah, it's uh, some abundance first and structure later. Maybe this is all, maybe also true in economic structure or something like that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very interesting. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So if there are no more questions, uh, we can move to the break.